Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Diana. This is Market Stalkers. Let me ask you a question. Since you started trading, did you have times when you kind of got lucky on a trade and made a killing in one day or one week, only to give it all back quicker than you made it? And then some. Before you know it, you start making excuses, telling yourself that you'll never make it, that this is impossible, and you know, any number of different sort of nonsense that your own internal critic can come up with. And that's nothing more than your self-limiting beliefs coming out and your own negative internal dialogue putting the brakes on a journey that is scary, filled with uncertainty, all in an effort to try and suck you back into your comfort zone. So let's talk about self-confidence today and how it can impact your day trading decisions. Now I've said this many times before that becoming a day trader is quite possibly one of the toughest skills in the world and yet you know many people have this idea that it's as easy as a click of a button and in reality successful traders hold an inordinate amount of experience. We gather lots of statistics working on the risk models to generate that alpha consistently, you know, to be consistently profitable. It doesn't mean that we never lose, it just means that we have steps in place for when we're not reading the market particularly well. And this skill, even though the act of going into a trade itself is just like one click of a button, with consistently profitable traders, that one click of a button is filled with years and years of experimentation, uh, trial and error, gathering knowledge, making lots of mistakes and, you know, getting humbled by the markets until one day it all starts to kind of click together and then a trader finds him or herself ending most weeks in profit. So it's not like one of those things where, you know, you learn everything, then you wake up and it's like, boom, you can trade like the wind. <laughs> Instead, it's like a very gradual development. And once you get to consistent profitability, initially you don't really realize that you are consistently profitable because it happens over you know, such a long period of time. And depending on your background, this whole journey, this whole process, it can take two or three years, especially if you have um, active guidance from a professional trader who's willing to share their experiences with you. But for most people, the path to profitability on their own starting from scratch with no help, no nothing. It's anywhere from seven to 15 years in the making. Every so often I have people come to me with immeasurable goals. And what do I mean by that? Well, they have these goals that say something like become consistently profitable or get funded by top step. As a general thing on your, I guess your vision board, that's fine to have that kind of goal in life. But immeasurable goals are very destructive for the everyday mundanity of being a day trader. Because in order to become consistently profitable, you need to have good daily trading habits that you do over and over, day in, day out, without thinking, basically on autopilot. So in that respect, I always like to make the comparison between losing weight and day trading. It doesn't matter how well you behave in a 24 hour period. Even if you spend eight hours working out, going out for a hike, you know, two hours at the gym, you know, one day is not going to make any difference in your overall appearance or your overall fitness. And in the exact same way, if you have one single day where you follow all of your rules, you follow your risk model and your position sizing, one day is not going to make any difference to your overall account size. Not significantly anyways, if you're doing it right. So instead of saying to yourself, I want to become consistently profitable, why not set a measurable goal for yourself that, for example, in six weeks time, you want to stop entering a position right after you've just lost one trade. You can also go one step further to uh, like set yourself a time limit for after you lose the trade. So anything from two hours up to 24 hours, and then you can trade again. You know, obviously it depends on your style, whether you're trading in or swing. And then come six weeks time, you set a task review, a performance review for yourself. How well have I done with this one single goal that I set out for myself? How many times did I break my own rule? That is a measurable goal. So I suggest focusing on the process rather than some arbitrary end 
end goal. Once you put all of your habits in the right order, and you, you, know, you get the right combination of accuracy percentage, risk reward ratio, expectancy, uh, number of trades per day or per week, then as time goes by and as you eliminate all of your weaknesses one by one, one day you will wake up to find that you've had six months of profitable trading behind you. I mean, our Market Stalkers Gold service can put the right steps for you in place. So you will get there quicker. But you know, we've still had people who are so hell bent on, on those immeasurable goals that they refuse to follow the process. And it sometimes takes like six months before those kinds of traders realize their own self-limiting beliefs are getting in the way. They're afraid to relinquish control to someone else for the fear of their own failure. Because they've, you know, they set this like massive, humongous, life-changing goal for themselves. And then they're constantly uh, rushing ahead. They're, they're attempting to jump forward. So they want to make the Olympics without doing all the championships and practice and you know all of that and then they end up making the same mistakes over and over but by not breaking down the process into small chunks to work on that's how you get good at something but no they want everything right there right then and then when it doesn't happen in like two three four months because we're constantly going one step forward two steps back the self-limiting beliefs come out and then I get these drawn out messages. I have to face reality. I've done this for X amount of years. I can't make it work and blah, blah, blah. And you know, in the last year alone, I've had about three people with very similar issues. And it's always the same thing. Too much, too soon. There's no way to measure the goals that they've set for themselves and they keep getting disappointed and are very emotionally involved with every individual trade outcome. Because whenever there's a lost trade, they don't see it as like, nah, it's just one lost trade, doesn't matter, let's keep going. No, they see it as yet another failure that is standing in the way of their big, humongous goal. <laughs> and yet, it is exactly that big, huge goal that is getting in the way of their good daily habits. You know, you're supposed to be just grinding away every day to minimize the bad behaviors and use each day to clear up some implications of each order flow event. And also to understand that one trade means nothing. Just like one day of working out and eating healthily also means fuck all. So it's vital to the process for the trader to be able to accept a losing day. You're never gonna be able to manipulate the markets yourself. You know, the markets are an uncertainty environment. We ultimately have no control over where the market will go, but we do have control over stop losses, position sizes, how long you're going to keep a trade, making sure the entire risk model is valid, not over trading, not under trading. And then also I have traders who come to me saying stuff like, oh, my risk management is flawless. Only for, to find out that their idea of risk management is just using a certain position per trade. I mean, you know, that's a good thing. What about how many trades do you do in a day or a week versus your R multiples expectancy? You know, and how many times do your trades actually reach that expectancy? That's all a part of the risk model, not just, oh, percentage per trade. But inexperience and lack of knowledge always leads to lack of confidence, which amplifies the self-limiting beliefs. And that then results in that vicious cycle of being mean to yourself, negative internal dialogue. There's this misconception that some gut feeling is the way to beat the market and generate profits, especially prevalent with like millennials. You can't trade on a feel without having tons of experience. <laughs> because if you're just trading on a feel without experience, there's, there's nowhere to, to draw the data from. You know, if you don't already have statistical data of about 500 to 1,000 trades in a six to 12 month period, what, are you, what, what is your gut feel about? Just some like psychic ability with your crystal ball while you're like smoking a spliff. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. No, it has to come from data. You know, there's no way around it. it. It doesn't happen by going, oh yeah, in a year I will be a funded trader. But let me ask you this. <laughs> Do you think that's where it ends? You get funded by a company and you're done? No, mate, that's when the real stress begins. <laughs> and if by then you haven't ironed out all of your problems trading small sizes and you know experimenting on everything and anything and then knowing which areas you do need to work on all of it will come out when you start trading a real funded account and then what you're going to lose the funded account you're going to go back to your self-limiting beliefs 
trading profitably, it's not always a linear path. You don't just get to consistency and then you never lose a trade. Therefore, instead of saying, I'm going to be a bazillionaire in five years, just get up the next day and pick your biggest fuck up from the previous month, right? Whatever caused your previous month's biggest drawdown, whether it's removing a stop loss, using a stop loss that is too large, messing up your position sizes, like whatever it was, whatever hurt your performance the most, work on improving that fuck up. And what you're trying to do, you're trying to deliberately minimize the frequency of this one big fuck up. And then once you've either eliminated or minimized it in like a six to eight week period, then you make that newly improved skill into daily habit. And then once it's no longer affecting your performance, then you can move on to the second biggest fuck up, which might not be as big as the first one, but it's still messing with your performance. And then you rinse and repeat. That's the only way to get to that dream of having day trading as one of your serious sources of income. Don't let your inner critic tell you that you can't do something. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the video useful, click on like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And let me know down in the comments if you've struggled with self-confidence in trading. Are you still struggling with this? How are you tackling it? Let's start a discussion. Click here for trader issues and click here for the weekly strategy videos. I'll see you guys next time.